Today's question, what? Does God send people to hell? Oh no, we're gonna go into predestination? Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Espresso with Sky, giving you a fresh perspective on faith, life, God, and the Bible. I am Pastor Sky, and these are my two sidekicks. If you haven't done so, go ahead, hit all those buttons, sub, like, whatever it is, but please leave a comment below. Tell me what you really think about today's topic. All right, and if you want to support this ministry, we got PayPal and buymeacoffee.com. Yep, you can buy me just a cup of coffee. All right, so let's get into today's heavy subject. Now, this is a huge debate in Christianity, the discussion of free will. Do we have the choice to do what we want or did God predestine things and we have no choice because God has made us this way even before we were born? And of course, that brings in the question, did God predestine people to hell? If there's predestination, it means not only did God predestine people to heaven, it also means God has predestined people to hell, which is the majority of the people in the world. Now, if there is free will, it means people have made their own choices and decisions to send them to that place. Now, before we get into any more of this discussion, the one thing I do want to let you know is this has nothing to do with is God all knowing. Knowing that something's going to happen is much different than making people do it. That's completely different. So we're not going to touch the all-knowing. We're only going to talk about is there predestination or is there free will. Let's first start with the predestination side, and we're going to start in Ephesians chapter 1. Now, the reason we're going to start with this chapter is because the actual word predestined is in it twice. First in verse 4 and 5, and then in verse 11, basically stating, before anything was created, you were already predestined to come to Christ, which basically means God has predestined people to go to heaven. Now, what does that mean about the other people that were predestined to heaven? Well, that means they were predestined to go to hell. So in the predestination argument, it basically says that, yeah, God has only predetermined a few people to go up in his mercy and grace. And to justify this, we have like Romans chapter 6, verse 23 that says, for all have sinned and fall short. So no one deserves to go to heaven. So you are just blessed and it's by God's grace that you are going there. So be thankful and grateful I guess on both sides another verse that's really good is Romans chapter 9 verse 15 and 16 and this one's interesting because it first says that God can do whatever he wants he gives mercy and compassion to whomever he wants because he's the perfect almighty all-knowing omniscient omnipotent God so he should have the choice and then verse 16 says it doesn't matter what you desire or whatever effort you put in. It's all about what God wants, which means this. Even if you work so hard to come to God and you believe in Jesus and do all these things, if you're not predestined there, it doesn't make a difference. You're always going to end up in the place you were meant to be. It's up to God, not up to you. So here's where it gets kind of interesting because now we're fighting with, oh my gosh, well, we do trust God and God is loving and God does the best for, for the people that love him. So that's those that are predestined to heaven, but it's kind of sad for those that are not going to heaven and they're predestined to hell. Wow, this doesn't really make any sense. And that's the predestination argument. So let's get into the free will argument. Now, the thing that's really weird is the verses I use to prove free will is also from the same author of the verses we use to prove predestination. Tell me that's weird. Paul wrote Ephesians, Paul wrote Romans, and then now I'm gonna quote 2 Timothy to prove that Paul was wrong. I'm using Paul's verses to prove both sides, which means it's contradicting each other. So 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 and 21, basically says that there's this house with a lots of pottery in it. Some are for noble purposes, some are for ignoble purposes. But if a person cleanses himself from the latter, they will be made and used for noble purposes. So that person's desire and their efforts make a difference in how they're used by God. But here's the thing. In Romans chapter 9, verse 16, which we just read for the predestination argument, says... Man's desire and effort makes no difference. It's all up to God. So which is right? This is coming from the same author. 
Not only there, you'll look at verses that talk about human responsibility, like Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. Very popular verse, ask, seek, knock. That is your responsibility. And then God will help you find. God will help you get what you want. God will help you to open the door. And that's God's responsibility. And all of a sudden, we look at this like, wait a second. You're telling us if we do our responsibility, then God will do His. Wow, that's about free will. Now, some people will say, wait, isn't that just New Testament? But it was all over the Old Testament too. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 to 28, guess what God tells all His people when He gives them the law? He says, life is all up to you. It's whether you choose to obey and be blessed, or it's if you choose to disobey and be cursed. It is up to you and you face these two roads every day. It is your choice. And when you read the scriptures a lot, you're going to see there are so many conditional statements and laws by God. If and, if you do this, then this will happen. If you do that, then that will happen. God is telling people that they have a responsibility, they have a choice to do what is right and to do what is wrong. Now here's the thing that's really weird about the free will argument. The free will argument is basically saying that human beings themselves are able to go to heaven. If I do well, if I believe, if I do everything I'm supposed to do, then I can go to heaven. And where does God fit into this picture? And that's why there are problems on both sides of the coin. So where do we go from here? Now, let's think a little bit more deeply about this topic. When we look from the predestination argument, God does what He wants. I give compassion and mercy to whomever I want. It doesn't matter on your desire effort. It's about what I want. So the first question is, what does God want? What does He really want? And if you look in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, it actually says, what does God want? And it says, God wants everyone to be saved. Now, this is where it gets really weird because if God's will, if what God wants is everyone to be saved, why doesn't He just save everyone? If that's God's will, doesn't He have the power to save everyone? Why would you save just a few amount of people and then make yourself sad like, oh no, look at all these people going to hell. Why don't you just save everyone? It doesn't make sense that God does what He wants and what He wants is to save everyone, yet He only saves a few people. So that's kind of weird. The second thing is, on the free will side, you cannot do things without God. It's not like you can say, God, I have done everything to deserve to go to heaven. I must be put in heaven. No one can say that because it's also true that all have sinned. There's not a single perfect person who's never made a mistake in their life. We have sinned. So you see that both parts are in the Bible and we also see that both parts are necessary. The most important thing that I want you to think about today, I want you to think about this really deeply is, what's the point of everything? Why did God do all this? And when you look at throughout the scriptures, it's always about love. Everything he did out of love, right? He sent his son because he loved the world, right? Because he loves us, he did this. Because he loves us, he forgives us. Because he loves us, he blesses us. Now, the thing about love is, love is not a one-way street. But love is a two-way street and two people, two beings have to choose to love each other. And the one thing that I really think about the most is when it comes to love, the one word that never comes into my mind is the word force. You can never force love. Let me give an example. Let's just say there's, there's a woman I really love. Think about this. Oh, I love her so much. Oh, I want to marry her. And one day she comes to me and says, Pastor Sky. I want to marry you. I'm like, oh, oh my goodness, you want to marry me? And I'm so happy. But then I'm curious, like, why? Why did you all of a sudden change your mind? And then she says to me, because your dad came to my house, kidnapped my parents at gunpoint and said, if you don't marry my son, I'm going to kill your parents. And that's why I'm marrying you. Now, do you think I want to marry this girl? And the answer is absolutely not. Because I know deep in my heart, no matter how much I love this person, if this person doesn't truly choose themselves to love me, I can't accept it. I know I'm not gonna be happy. 
if this is really about love, if it's really about a relationship between us and God, then we have to think one step more deeply. Is it just something that's predestined? Hmm. That only God needs to love us and then we're done there because we're predestined to love and not love. Well, can you force people to love? It doesn't make any sense. But then on the flip side, you can't do it yourself either. You can't just say, well, God, I will love you and that's all that matters. No, because you need both sides. And I want you to think more deeply about this, thinking about love, about relationships, about you and God more than anything else when you think about this argument or discussion of free will versus predestination. All right. So I hope you guys really enjoyed it today. Have an amazing, amazing and awesome day. Uh, I am having a great time. Did I say ham? No, I am having a great time making these contents for you guys. Everyone have an awesome and wonderful day. See you guys again next week. My name's Sky. Here's my two sidekicks. Everyone, see you again. Bye-bye.